وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to be speaking about الاعتكاف This is what the lecture is going to be about today بإذن الله الكريم and the way that I plan in order to tackle this issue is in the following ways. Number one, معنى الاعتكاف. What does اعتكاف actually mean? Because as we always say, الحكم على شيء فرع عن تصوره. You can't place a ruling on something if you don't have a perception of it. You would have to first of all understand that thing before you could give a ruling. Before we say i'tikaf is a sunnah, or i'tikaf is it wajib, and etc. We first of all have to know what i'tikaf is, right? So ma'ana al-i'tikaf is important that we start with it. Then the second point is adillatu mashru'iyatihi. The second point that we're going to speak about is the evidence pertaining to whatever ruling it has, whether it's wajib or not. Whatever rulings and evidences that are pertaining to it, we'll speak about it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Number three, we're going to speak about its hukum, hukmuhu, its ruling. Um, and we'll deal with that, inshallah ta'ala. And you'll see what the difference between the evidence for it and the ruling is, inshallah ta'ala. Then we're going to speak about it, hikmatuhu, the wisdom why it was legislated. Why did the sharia choose to legislate al-i'tikaf? And what is the wisdom behind it? Then we're going to speak about waqtuhu, the timing in which it's done. What time is i'tikaf done? <coughs> and what time has the sharia set for it? We'll speak about that inshallah ta'ala. We're going to speak about shurutuhu, the prerequisites and the conditions that are required from the individual who's doing i'tikaf. Shurut, the conditions <coughs> that are required from the mu'takif, the one who's doing i'tikaf. Adabuhu. We're going to speak about the etiquettes of i'tikaf and the manners that a person needs to observe. We're also going to speak about mawani'u, things that we should stay away from, that we're not allowed to do, that we should avoid once doing i'tikaf. We're also going to speak about mawdi'u, where is i'tikaf done, and the place that i'tikaf occurs. And then inshallah ta'ala we're going to do a khatima, a conclusion inshallah ta'ala. I wanted to take uh, all of these points and tackle all of these points and discuss all of these points with you today. But because the time is very short, we will not be able to go through all of these points. We won't be able to. But the scholars, they say, مَا لَا يُتْرَكُ, ما لا يدرك كله لا يترك جله. If we can't do all of it, we'll do what we can. We'll do the best of those points, inshallah ta'ala, that we can. So let's start, inshallah ta'ala, by defining i'tikaf. They say, ما لا يدرك جله لا يترك كله. That's what they said. If you can't do something in its totality, then you shouldn't miss that which you can do and to do the best in that. The first point, inshallah, is معنى الاعتكاف. What does i'tikaf mean? I'tikaf has a linguistic meaning and it has a technical meaning, a shar'i meaning. The linguistic meaning is al-iqamah. It is al-iqamah, to remain somewhere. Okay? It's to reside somewhere. It's to remain somewhere. That's what it means. The Arabs, they say, akafa bil makani, the person remain in a place. إذا أقام به والعكوف المحبوس. If you're imprisoned somewhere, if you're kept somewhere, this is i'tikaf. That's the linguistic meaning. The shar'i meaning of i'tikaf is المكث في المسجد. 
it is to stay in the masjid. So it's not any place. So when the Sharia uses the word i'tikaf, it's not just al iqam al mutlaqah, unrestricted residency, I'm unrestricted uh, remaining in any place. No, it's not. I can say it properly. It's not residing anywhere in every, every place. I'tikaf means to reside where? It means to, to reside in the masjid. So it's al maktuf al masjid. The second point in the definition of the shar'i, the first one is to remain in the masjid. The second one is ala sabil al qurba. You're remaining in the masjid to get closer to Allah. It's not that you're waiting for somebody to bring you uh, debt money or uh, you want to meet a friend in the masjid. That's not itikaf. It has to be ala sabil al qurba that you're sitting here to get closer to Allah by it. And the third one is min shakhsin makhsusin. It's from a particular individual. Meaning, this, this individual is a particular individual. What do we mean by a particular individual? We're going to see that later. He has to be a Muslim. He can't be a Kafir. He has to be a person who's sane, not insane. So it's a particular individual. Bisifatin makhsusah. And it's done in a particular description. Meaning, there's a time that it starts and there's a time that it ends. We'll speak, to, speak about that, inshallah ta'ala, in more details. But we, what we learned in the shari meaning of i'tikaf is what? That it's to remain in the masjid, ala sabil al qurba, to get closer to Allah by doing it. And the third one was, it is done by a particular person in a particular way. Now we want to move on to the second point now, which is adilla tu mashru'iyatihi. Is i'tikaf even legislated? And if it is, what's the evidence for it? The evidence that i'tikaf is legislated in our sharia, it is something that you can't do in our religion. The evidence for that is found in the Quran, the Sunnah, and the Ijma'ah. Those three mention it. The Quran, Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ Allah says, don't have sexual intercourse with your wives. وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Whilst you are doing i'tikaf in the, in the masjid. And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 187. Ayah 100 and what? 87. 87. This ayah, it says, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ Don't have sexual intercourse with your wives, your spouses. وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Whilst you are, what? Whilst... You are residing whilst you are remaining in the masjid, whilst you're a mu'takif in the masjid. So we have the ayah. We're now going to move on to the hadith. The hadith is the hadith is sahihain min hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. The hadith is in found in Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya'atakifu that the Prophet of Allah, Nabiullah Muhammad, he used to do i'tikaf al-ashri al-awakhiri, the last 10 days min Ramadan in the month of Ramadan. He would do i'tikaf. Hatta tawafahu Allah. Until Allah tabarak wa ta'ala took his soul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thumma ataka fa azwajuhu min ba'di. And then his wives, they did i'tikaf after his death. Meaning it was something that was carried on after him. So the hadith here tells us, that the messenger did i'tikaf until he died. Even the last year in which he died, he did i'tikaf 20 nights he did it, not 10. He did 20. And then when he died, his wives did i'tikaf. So this hadith shows us mashru'iyatul i'tikaf. That i'tikaf is a legislated matter in our religion. As for it being a mas'ala that the scholars unanimously agree upon. The scholars all agree that i'tikaf is a legislated matter. And this consensus is transmitted. This consensus is transmitted to us by number one, Al Imam Ibn Qudama Rahimahullah in his Kitab Al Mughni, which is a sharah of Al Muhtasar Al Khiraqi. He transmits an ijma' in this mas'ala that is unanimously agreed upon by the scholars that i'tikaf is part of our religion. So it is not a disputed matter. The second person who transmitted the Ijma' is Ibn al Mundir in his Kitab al Ijma' and also Ibn Hazm in his Kitab Maratib al Ijma' Ibn Hazm rahimahullah he also transmits the Ijma' in his Kitab Maratib al Ijma' and then we have the evidences 
that our religion is built upon Al-Quran, Wa Sunnah, Wa Ijma'ah. All three of them, what do they point towards? They all point towards the permissibility and the legislation of what? Al I'tikaf. Now we're going to move on to Hukmuhu, its ruling. What is the ruling of I'tikaf then? Okay, we know it's legislated in our Sharia, but the things that are legislated in our Sharia are of different levels. They're not all the same. There are things that are legislated in our Sharia that are wajib. There are things that are legislated in our Sharia that are mubah. There are some things that are legislated in our Sharia that are haram. There are some things that are legislated in our Sharia that is what? Um, mandub, recommended. And also, there are things that are legislated in the Sharia which is what? Makruh is disliked. And then, which of those five does it fall under? I'tikaf is mandubun bil shari. That the i'tikaf, it's mandub in the Sharia. I mean, it's recommended, highly recommended. Are we all together, brothers? According to the Sharia, i'tikaf is mandubun ilayhi fi shari. In our Sharia, i'tikaf is, 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 is recommended. It's something that the Sharia loves. It is something that the Sharia requires highly from you. But it's not obligatory. But it becomes obligatory if the person makes a covenant and an oath and a vow to do i'tikaf. So it is from those things that become obligatory if you make it obligatory on yourself. يَجِبُ بِالنَّذَرِ وَيُسْتَحَبُ بِالشَّرْعِ That's what Ibn Rushd mentions in his kitab بِدَايَةِ الْمُجْتَهِدْ وَنِهَايَةُ الْمُقْتَصِدْ That according to the Sharia, i'tikaf is recommended. But it can become obligatory if you say this Ramadan, Oh Allah, I promise you, I make a covenant with you, Oh Allah. I make a vow that I will do i'tikaf. Then it becomes obligatory on you. Because you made a nether. You made a covenant, you made an oath, it now becomes obligatory on that. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man, man Allah Anyone who makes a nether, he makes a promise and a covenant and an oath to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bukhari narrated this in Hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Abdullah ibn, sorry, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he transmitted that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, sorry, Umar radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet of Allah, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said to the Prophet of Allah, inni nadartu, I made a covenant, I made an oath, for what? Inni nadartu an a'takifa, I made a covenant and an oath that I'm going to do i'tikaf. Laylatan fil masjid al haram. One night in the prof in the masjid al haram, I made a covenant with Allah. I made a nether that I'm going to do i'tikaf one night in the masjid, masjid in the masjid al haram. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "O fi bi nadrika." Then fulfill your covenant, Umar. Then fulfill your covenant, Umar. Question here, brothers: Is the fact that i'tikaf being recommended? We said it's recommended in the Sharia. It being recommended, is it for the men and the women same? Or is it specific to the men only, not the women? We say, وَيَسْتَوِي مَعَ الرِّجَالِ فِي حُكْمِهِ النِّسَاءُ The women are the same with the men in this ruling. It's also recommended for them as well. Because Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ مُعْتَكِفًا The Prophet of Allah was doing i'tikaf. Aisha said this. Sorry, Safiya said this, sorry. Safiya bint Huyay, who's the Prophet's wife. She said in this hadith that كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معتكفا في المسجد The Prophet of Allah was doing i'tikaf in the masjid. في العشر الأواخر من رمضان, the last 10 days of Ramadan. فأتيته أزوره. Safiya said, I came to visit him. I came to the Prophet of Allah to visit him. Laylan, one particular night, and with him was what? His wives. His wives were there in doing i'tikaf with him. Are we all together? Aisha did i'tikaf with the Prophet. Hafsa did i'tikaf with the Prophet. And Zainab bint Jahsh did i'tikaf with the Prophet. 
But when the last person coming, who was Zainab bint Jahsh, when she came and she built herself a tent, because the Prophet he, he stayed in the tent on the side of the masjid. When he realized she came, he was worried that the rest of the wives might come and get jealous. Because already three are here. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that year he cancelled the i'tikaf. He chose not to do it. And the year after, he made his i'tikaf 20 nights. So this shows, Lakin, that i'tikaf for the women is like the for the men. Um, like in the women, when they want to do i'tikaf, the conditions that the scholars stipulate, and Sheikh Albani rahimahullah mentions in his kitab, uh, Qiyam Ramadan, is he says, Wala shakka anna dalika muqayyadun bi idhni awliyaihinna. The woman has to take the permission of her guardian. Wa amnil fitna, and it has to be safety from any fitna that might occur to her. Wal khalwa ma'ar rijal, and that she's safe from not staying alone with men. That if she comes to the masjid, that it won't happen. That there will be a time she will be in a room with men by herself, a man by herself. That should be something that is definitely not going to take place. Because the Qa'idah, Sheikh Albani says, is Dar'ul Mafsadati Muqaddamun Ala Jalbil Masalih. To bring good, which is the itkaf, what takes precedence over that is to remove the harm. For her to free mix with men, or to stay with a man by herself, or for her to go against her guardian, and etc is a fitna, is a trial and tribulation. So to remove the fitna takes precedence over bringing any good. Now we're going to move on to hikmatu. What was the wisdom in why Laylatul Qadr, uh, sorry, uh, i'tikaf was legislated? Why was it legislated? What was the wisdom behind it? What was the hikmah? As Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, we believe Allah's actions, they have a wisdom behind it. We believe Allah when He legislates something, there's a hikmah behind it. Alimahu man alimahu wa jahilahu man jahilahu. The one who knows it, knows it, and the one who's ignorant about it is what? Is ignorant, ignorant about it. And just because you don't know sometimes why Allah legislated a matter, or why he prohibited a matter, just because you don't know it, doesn't necessarily mean that there's no, there's no wisdom behind it. So what is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he legislated i'tikaf? The hikmah, two great scholars mentioned it. There are many more, but I just have with me two now. The first one is Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah. He mentions it in his kitab, Zadul Mi'ad, Fi Hadi al-Khayr al-Ibad. He mentions it in the second volume, 86 to 87. He mentions it in his kitab, Zadul Mi'ad. He mentions it in the second volume, page 86 to 87. And the second scholar is Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali. He mentions it in his kitab, Lata'if al-Ma'arif, page 203. Ibn Rajab al Hambari, he mentions it in his Kitab, Lata'if al Ma'arif, page 203. Both of them, let's start with the first one being Ibn al Qayyim. Ibn al Qayyim says, the reason why Allah legislated subhanahu wa ta'ala i'tikaf is the perfection of the heart and the rectification of the heart and the heart being steadfast. On the way Allah loves and is pleased with, it, it can occur when the person is in a solitude, صح? when they're alone by, by themselves. So Allah wa ta'ala legislated itikaf for that. Because the thing Allah looks at is the heart. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum wa la ila suwarikum, wa la ki yanzuru ila kulubikum wa amalikum. The hadith is Sahih Muslim, the hadith Abi Hurairah. That Allah doesn't look at your form, Allah doesn't look at how big you are, Allah doesn't look at your physique. What Allah looks at is the person's heart. So the perfection of the heart is what's required in Ramadan, especially these last 10 nights. So the person, he goes into i'tikaf. This is what keeps that heart steadfast. The person's heart disconnects from the worldly matters, whether it be his wife, his children, his business and his dunya, all of the things that are Awa'iq, they are obstacles between him and fully focusing on Allah, he's now pushed them all to the side. And he's now fully focused on what? He's fully focused on the relationship between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al-Qayyim's kalam, the zubda, uh, the conclusion of it is that. 
As for Ibn Hafid bin Rajab's statement, it's very short, so we read it and we'll translate it word for word. He says, مَعَنَ الْإِعْتِكَافِ حَقِيقَةُ قَطْعُ الْعَلَائِقِ عَنِ الْخَلَائِقِ لِلِتِصَالِ بِخِدْمَةِ الْخَالِقِ He said that the meaning of i'tikaf and the real essence of i'tikaf is قَطْعُ الْعَلَائِقِ It is to cut any ties from what? عن الخلائق, the creation. So it defeats the purpose when you're doing i'tikaf if you're calling people on the phone. And if you're messaging. And if you're on social media. It defeats the purpose of i'tikaf. Because i'tikaf is قَطْعُ الْعَلَائِقِ عَنِ الْخَلَائِقِ is to disconnect yourself and your bond and your relationship with what? The world, the outside world. You're here, cut from all of that. Why? What's the reason? لِلْتِصَالِ بِخِدْمَةِ الْخَالِقِ And the reason why your heart is disconnected from all of that is for it to serve the Creator. So even if you're not talking to anyone on social media, you have, you're not using your phone, but even if you're not doing anything in the message, you're just sitting around and you're not serving your Lord. And then again, it, then again, it goes against the what? حَقِيقَةُ It goes against the real essence of what i'tikaf is. Because i'tikaf is compounded of two things. What is it compounded of? قَطْعُ الْعَلَائِقِ عَنِ الْخَلَائِقِ Disconnect yourself from the creation. One. And the second thing is لِلِتْتُصَالِ بِخِدْمَةِ الْخَالِقِ That you're serving your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you serve your Lord? By reading Quran, by doing dhikr, by praying. Huh? and etc. So those two things Ibn Rajab mentions in his kitab Lata'if al-Ma'arif. Waqtuhu now, we're going to go into the, the timing in which i'tikaf is legislated. Waqtuhu, the time that i'tikaf is legislated is any time in the year. Fi ayyi waqti min ayami sana. Any time within the year, i'tikaf can happen. And it can occur. It has been transmitted that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam i'takaf al-ashr al-awail min shawal. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did i'takaf the first 10 days of a shawal. He did it. He did i'takaf alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another riwayah says, no, ashr al-awakhir, the last 10 nights of shawal. That happened. Lakin. I'tikaf is greatly emphasized في رمضان in the month of Ramadan. Why? لمواظبة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيه. Because the Prophet was consistent in doing it. عليه الصلاة والسلام. He was consistent in doing it. Are we all together brothers? <coughs> he was consistent in doing it in Ramadan. And that is what he was known to do it in. And it was especially in the what? The last 10 nights of Ramadan. There was a time which I mentioned, he meant he done it for how many? 20. Like in generally, and the overwhelming majority of the times, the Messenger would do it at the what? The last 10 nights, والسلام, And that is the most virtuous timing to do it. Um, when does it start? What's the starting time for the person who's doing i'tikaf? The mubtada'il i'tikaf, the beginning of i'tikaf, it's to be بعد صلاة, بعد صلاة الفجر, after Salat al Fajr. The person comes into Itikaf. What time? The scholars they have two قول. The scholars have two views. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he mentions that the person comes in the 20, 20th Fajr. So he's there for the night of what? The 21st. The 20th, the person comes in. So they're there from the, for the 21st. And another goal of the scholars is that it's the 21st in which it starts Fajr onwards. 21st in the night, the person comes in, Fajr time they come in, and this is when it starts, the 21st. Those are the two goals. Um, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentions that kana, so let's first of all prove that it's Fajr onwards. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentions in the hadith, um, that كان إذا أراد أن يعتكف If the Prophet wanted to do i'tikaf صلى الفجر He would pray fajr ثم دخل معتكفة Then he would enter his i'tikaf يرحمك الله So this is what we understand Now in the hadith what does it say? It says كان إذا أراد The word كان What does كان show in the Arabic language? The Kana shows يقتضي الدوام عند أهل العلم 
Kana shows in the Arabic language at dawam consistency, continuation. That's what it shows. وَلِذَلِكَ التَّقِيُّ الدِّينَ السُّبْكِيُّ He has a risala called قَدْرُ الْإِمْكَانِ الْمُخْتَطَفِ فِي دَلَالَةِ كَانَ إِذَا اَعْتَكَفِ where he speaks about the kana only in the hadith. Taqiyuddin al subki he wrote a kitab where he called it Qadr al Imkan al Mukhtataf fi dalalati kana ila atakaf. And he mentions in that book, after speaking in length and in details, he mentions and he talks about the dalala, the indication that is in the word kana that was used in this particular hadith. And that kana is used for what? That the kana is used in the Arabic language, it is used yaqtadi dawam, consistency, continuation. That this is how he always was, alayhi salatu wasalam. So the hadith says, kana idha arada, that the Prophet was always, general, every time. Idha arada, if he wanted, an ya'takifa, salla al fajr, he would pray fajr, thumma dakhala mu'takifa. So this hadith shows us that when does it start, brothers? It starts after fajr. Because of that kana, Allah alone shows us. That's how he used to always do. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And when does it finish? It finishes fajr. It finishes fajr. As Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, he has a chapter in, in his sahih. He says, Babu man kharaja min i'tikafi inda subh. Bukhari has a chapter in, in his sahih where he said, Babu the chapter. Man kharaja min i'tikafi, the person who leaves his i'tikaf عند الصبح at the fajr time. And then he brings the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri that says, اعتكفنا مع رسول الله We did اعتكاف with the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, And then he says in the same hadith فلما كان صبيحة عشرين نقلنا متاعنا What are the conditions? The conditions are Al-Islam, number, number one is the person is a Muslim. The condition is what? That the person is a what? That the person is a? That the person is a Muslim. Um, so itikaf, is it accepted from a disbeliever? No. Because Iman is first of all required from him. But he is mukhatab bi furu'i sharia. But he is being addressed in the itikaf. Meaning, the istihbab of i'tikaf also applies on him as well. But he can't come with it because he's a disbeliever. So he has to become a believer first. The second condition is al-aql. That the person has what? Al-aql or tamiz. He's sane. And the fact that the person is tamiz. So al-aql and tamiz, we bring it together, which is that the person is sane and he has reached puberty. He has tamiz. He can distinguish between things. So he's not a little child. Good. The third one is an niyyah, intention. Um, intention is needed. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn Rushd, uh, in his kitab, بداية المجتهد, he says, أَمَّا النِّيَّةُ فَلَا أَعْلَمُ فِيهَا خِلَافًا As for the intention, I don't know any scholars who disputed in it, that it's required. I have no, I don't know any scholar who disputed in the intention that is required, that is a prerequisite. Good. The next condition that is required is a siyam, fasting. That person who is doing itikaf has to be a person who is fasting. And this is something after research became qawl rajih indi. Especially these last couple of days, this is a strong opinion that if the person is not fasting, he can't do itikaf because it's a prerequisite. What's the evidence for that? The evidence for that is the hadith of Aisha where she said a sunnah fi man i'takafa an yasuma. That it's a sunnah whoever does i'takaf to fast. Now what we have to understand is when the sahabas they say the word a sunnah, a sunnah sorry. When the sahabas they say a sunnah indana, the sunnah to us is. What do they mean? The scholars they mention that it means it's something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam legislated. So even that though, it's the statement of Aisha which is mawquf, لَكِنْ لَهُ حُكْمُ الرَّفْعِ We deal with it as though it is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam statement. 
or the action of the Prophet ﷺ. So when you hear the companions, they said, as sunnatu indana. The scholars, they say, mawqufu lafdan marfu'u hukman. It has hukmu raf'i. It is dealt with as though the Prophet did it or said it. ولذلك العلامة ابن تركماني he has a kitab called الجوهر النقي and the, because the hadith I mentioned before which is السنة في من اعتكف أن يصوم is narrated by Bayhaqi in his Sunan Bayhaqi narrated in his Sunan and ابن تركماني he has a kitab called جوهر النقي جوهر النقي is actually published with the Sunan al-Kubra by Bayhaqi if you buy the Sunan al-Kubra by Bayhaqi you will find that جوهر النقي is published with it it's in it he mentions when he brings this hadith, he places a nice fa'idah on it. He says, وَمَذْهَبُ الْمُحَدِّثِينَ The methodology of the scholars of hadith. أَنَّ الصَّحَابِيَ That a companion, إِذَا قَالَ السُنَّةُ كَذَا That if a companion says that the sunnah is this, فَهُوَ مَرْفُوعُ It takes حُكْمُ الرَّفْعِ It's as though the Prophet said it, alayhi salatu wasalam. Until he said, pay attention, and this is where I want from the statement. Until he said, until he said, That when the companions, the word, when they use the word sunnah, first of all, they, it takes hukm al rafi It's like the Prophet said it. Number two, the sunnah according to the companions is mushtarakun bayna al wajibi wa sunnah al It can either be wajib and it can also be a sunnah according to the mutakhirin. When the Sahabas they say Sunnah, it doesn't necessarily mean the Sunnah according to the Muta'akhirin and the late scholars. It can either be wajib sometimes and it can sometimes be a Sunnah. Are we all together? So here the question is, when Aisha mentioned that as Sunnah to, that the Sunnah fi man i'takafa, the Sunnah for the one who's doing i'tikaf is an yasuma to fast. Does she mean the wajib or does she mean that it's recommended? Okay brothers. The evidence to show that it's wajib, that it's a re prerequisite for i'tikaf, that it's wajib, if you want to do i'tikaf, it's wajib that you have the fasting with you, is that Aisha mentioned in the context of sexual intercourse and leaving the masjid. And we know those two are things that you can't do in i'tikaf, that you have to stay away from. There are conditions that you have to avoid. Are we all together, brothers? Because Aisha radiallahu anha, when did she say, was sunnah fil mu'takifi? The sunnah that is required for the person who is doing i'tikaf is, Allah يخرج, that he doesn't leave, illa lihajati allati la budda minha. He doesn't leave unless there's a what? Unless there's a need for him to leave. And then look what she said after that. Wala yamassa al-mar'ah. And he doesn't have no sexual intercourse with a woman. We know leaving the masjid with no reason behind it, and also having sexual intercourse with your wife, whilst you're in a state of i'tikaf, what does he do to your i'tikaf? It nullifies it. So if the person is not fasting and they do itikaf, it nullifies the itikaf. There's no such thing as itikaf. Are we all together, brothers? Good. So that is an issue that needs to be understood. Also, anything that the Prophet did in itikaf, are we all together, brothers? Anything that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did in itikaf, we have to do in itikaf. Because his actions in i'tikaf is an explanation of what it means. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ It's clarifying everything. Unless there's an evidence that shows it's a sunnah, the asal is everything he does in i'tikaf, it's wajib. We don't want to go more into details, but you could find that in the kalam of Abu Bakr al-Jassas in Ahkam al-Quran, the first volume, page 245, when it comes to the ayah, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ he talks about it and he mentions the call Madhabu Adadi min salaf And of course there's a kalam of um, there's also the kalam of Zayla'i in Asbur Raya, you can also find it there. Now we're gonna move on to brothers. Um I'tikaf. I think the time is finished. We'll stop here and maybe carry on another time, another day. I have something to do as well. So we'll stop here inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we maybe carry on maybe tomorrow. Or if not, another time inshallah ta'ala. We can do tomorrow? Yeah, okay, we'll try to, we'll do inshallah tomorrow. What time? Yeah? Six o'clock inshallah ta'ala tomorrow. We'll do the next part of what's remaining from for the i'tikaf. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka tubulay.